Good morning, guys. I'm glad you could join me for another uh, installment of what is this? This is Revit certification. Uh, we've actually only have five more topics to talk about, so hopefully these will be five very short videos. Um, the first one we're going to talk about in this uh, series of five videos under managing documentation, um, the um, what is it called an objective. The objective we're looking at is create and modify text. So this will teach you how to create and modify text in Revit. Um, and there's two places to get a hold of the text tool. Um, there is the text tool inside of the annotate tab right here. So you click on the annotate tab and there will be your text tool. There's also a uh, text tool loaded into the quick access toolbar at the top by default. Um, if you typically I just use that one because it's already there. So it saves a lot of time from having to uh, switch to another tab. Uh, but once you click on that, so go ahead and click on that A that you see right there. It's going to actually create a new tab for you. Um, it's going to take you to the modify tab for place text. All right. And in placing text, we have some options. We have plain text with no leader. We have uh, a text with a two segment leader. And that basically just gives you an elbow somewhere in the midpoint of your uh, leader. You have a one segment leader with text, and that will be one leader with one segment. And of course, you can point that in any direction that you want to. Then you have a curved leader, text with a curved leader. You also, to the, to the right of this, you also have paragraphs for multi line text. Um, you have these little paragraph symbols that show where the leader will show up. Uh, this one is for the leader at the top left of that multi-line text, middle, and bottom left. Also on the right, top, middle, and bottom right. Over here you have uh, certain text alignments, um, top, middle, and bottom. And then of course you've got left justify, center justify, and right justify. So it's, it's pretty uh, common, you know, pretty uh, synonymous with um, any word processing program and to start our text we we're in our text tool of course so we just click and drag a box doesn't matter what size you draw the box uh, you can adjust it after you draw it and uh, you could type something yes, like that okay so that is a single line text with no leader um, and also, as you notice, there are some other tools that popped up once I started writing. So I can get my subscript, my superscript. I can actually change all these uh, to capitals by clicking here. So now it's all capitals. Um, then I can also bullet the information as well. However, I choose to bullet that. And I can also indent the information if I have multiple line, uh, multiple lines of text and I want some you know, maybe some hanging indents or something of, of that nature. Uh, of course, we also have underlined italics and bold. Uh, very common um, symbology that you find even in word processing programs. Um, but anyway, we've written our word. We want to get out of it. Or we've written our text and we want to get out of the text box. So we just kind of click in the white space somewhere. Do not hit enter. Enter will basically create a new line uh, of text. Uh, so we just want to click outside of that text box and then our text is ready to go. We have other options again, uh, which we can move the text around with we, if we uh, use that grip right over here, the four way grip. And then we have this little circular grip we can use to rotate it. The only thing I don't like about this is what if you want your text upside down? It will not let you put it upside down uh, just by doing this. Okay. All right. Uh, we can also uh, edit the size of the text box just simply by moving the, uh, the uh, side grip on the text box in or out. Okay. And to fully get out of that, you can actually just click again in a white space and then it just leaves it all alone just as it is. And no, I do not want to create another line of text. Okay. Now next is your text size. You know, your, your text is going to appear as different sizes um, on your um, 
your drawing. You, know, you see some text in this drawing right here. Uh, that's probably um, 3 30 seconds, I think, and this is probably 1 8 right here. And if you click on the type selector, uh, actually click on the, uh, the text that you're working on first. If we can get back into that, let's hit escape a couple of times. Now we can get back into it. Um, on the text drop down, on the type selector, you have other you know choices for text size. You got uh, typically by default you got one eighth of an inch Arial, and you got three thirty seconds of an inch Arial. And of course this one right here I made myself this one sixteenth inch Arial with a two after it, uh, which I got that simply by um, duplicating this. And you can do that. Let's go back into our text. I lost it. Okay, let's see. Oh, I'm in a sheet. That's probably why it's working that way. Um, there we go. Okay, so back in our text box, we can um, click on Edit Type. Okay, and of course we can change the color of our text, line weight of our text, background. Um, we can show border by clicking that checkbox. And let's see, the leader border offset, so we can offset that leader from the border. Uh, leader arrowhead, uh, we can choose different arrowheads for that. We can also choose a different font. Okay, and doing this is really as simple as clicking in the box, clicking the drop down, and just finding a font. Unfortunately, it does not give you a preview of that font, like, uh, say, Word or something like that would. Um, but uh, you can choose your font from here. Uh, and here is text size. I don't really mess with fonts a whole lot, but I do mess with the text size quite often. <clears throat> so if I wanted to change any of these, um, I would actually click on duplicate. And right now I'm, I'm on one eighth of an inch Arial. So I'll duplicate <clears throat> and I might change this to uh, one. I'm going to name it. My name box is way over here to the bottom left. So one sixteenth inch. Arial. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so um, that changes the name of it anyway. Of course, I still have to go here and change the size of it. And all you have to do is type in your size and it will recognize your text. Don't want to put a double inch mark there. All right, um, last one is tab size. I'm not sure exactly what tab size is. Let's change that to one inch, and then we can find out. I'm not sure what they refer to as the tab. Uh, let's see, or it might just be like tab, like indenting uh, your paragraph. Uh, but then you have uh, here, you, you have bold, italic, and underline also uh, that you can use. And now I'm just going to click OK. So with this new text, this 1 16th inch, 16th inch Arial, we're going to create another piece of text. First, we're going to click off of that, and then we're going to click on the text button, and then go to the type selector and select that new text we made. And we're going to type, hello. We're going to hit enter to make another line of text. And let's see what this, yeah, that's what that tab um, slot was for, our tab. So if you hit the tab button, that uh, is gonna, what I said it for was one inch. So if I hit the tab button, it's gonna tab over one inch. But that's not real important. That's nothing that they're gonna test you on. Um, but uh, that is basically how you would use the text tool. I can't remember if I showed you this. Did I show you this already where you can highlight the word And then hit this to capitalize all the letters. Maybe I did show you that already. All right. But anyway, that's how you use the text tool. Practice that a couple of times so you know where all the commands and everything are. Uh, and then when you get on the test and they ask you to adjust some text, you'll know exactly where to go and exactly how to do that. Okay. Thank you very much for joining me. We will see you on the next video, which will be Create and Modify Dimensions.